Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka. Welcome to another episode of Rural Heritage TV. The Pendleton Roundup held each September in Pendleton, Oregon, is a week-long celebration of Western heritage. The Westward Ho Parade is held Friday morning during Roundup and features hundreds of non-motorized entries, including mounted marching bands, Native Americans in full regalia, and draft horses pulling vintage horse-drawn vehicles from the Roundup's extensive collection. Roundup Parade Director Tim O'Hanlon talked to us about the event, the vehicles, and the exceptional parade. This is a uh, uh, parade that's been going on in Pendleton since 1910, so since the original Roundup, they've had a parade, and uh, it's all non-motorized, non-commercial, uh, really wonderful parade. We have uh, generally at least 70 wagons, vehicles, buggies, wagons, freighters, and countless horses, animals, mules, probably at least 700 uh, animals that go in the parade from oxen to longhorn steers. We have an uh, outfit that rides longhorns. We have oxen that pull a couple of wagons for us. And again, stagecoaches, buggies, freighters. We have really impressive three uh, triples with, they're usually pulled by six ups. And that means six horses are pulling it. And you get those three, that's a whole city block. It's, it is just absolutely impressive to see those go down a parade. And one of our freighters is, uh, dates back to 1850, went, around, went across the Oregon Trail, and it's just a beautiful part of history, and we keep it uh, going in that, you know, it's used, it's usable, it's in the, I mean, it's old, but it's still, that's our key is, we don't have like museum pieces that just go sit in a, in, a, in, a, in a museum and never get used. What we do here at Pendleton is we have actual real old wagons that are usable and can be used. Just as if you needed a, a, something to haul hay on your farm today, this would be the place you can get those wagons. They're, they're made to be for, for function, for use. Pendleton isn't a real big town. It's not. Pendleton's probably, I think, 17,000, maybe okay. 18,000. Okay, so pretty big. I mean, not, not Yeah, small I mean, it's, anyway. it's, well, it's, yeah, it's small. We, we feel we're small, but. But it's we're, a lot bigger during this week. Oh, it's huge. I yeah. mean, so, uh, Pendleton, uh, they say it's about, I don't know, so, so 17,000, it swells up to be, you know, 60,000. So, my house alone. Uh, I have two two kids, two high school, or they're college, and one's graduated. But uh, I have two kids, and so this week at my house, there's 25 people, beside my me and my wife. So imagine that every house in Pendleton swells up like that, and so uh, it's huge. Yeah. It, it, it it every every parking space is full. Every restaurant is full to the max. Uh, in fact, a lot of restaurants, they add like tents in the back where their parking is, but no, this town swells up. Pendleton is, you know, there's, there's a saying, you have before Roundup and after Roundup, and that, those, those are the two seasons of the year. I have a really good friend uh, that uh, called me, and he's uh, staying in the Dalles, and that's, that's an hour and a half away. And that's the closest he could get. And he, and he, you know, I mean, he, he, that's, that's where he is. So no, it's really cool. And not, not only 
you know, these small towns, but everybody's house and everybody, you know, you, you've got cowboys staying at, at people's ranches nearby yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff right, because right. it's it's huge. I mean, if you look around here, there's stalls everywhere and there's cowboys parked everywhere. And just walking around, listening to people talk to each other, it's almost like kind of a, a family reunion in that it seems like people know each other and this is when they see each other sometimes. It, it is. It really is. There, so so I'm, uh, I'm a... Uh, Trade guy, and and so I have Teamsters have been coming here for 40 years, and they they come here, they see their friends, they you know reminisce about all the years and what they've been doing. It is it's a huge family gathering, and these guys, uh, gals, uh, just love it. I mean, they 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 want to come. They come from all over. I have a, a, a Teamster uh, that. She, this is her second year. She's from Colorado. She brings her own vis-a-vis, -vis, which is a nice, beautiful Cinderella uh, carriage kind of thing. She comes from Colorado, brings her vis-a-vis. -vis. She has a Clydesdale. Comes here. She'll come. She wants to come every year for the rest of her life if she can. She just loves it. People love it. They have a great time, and it's all about you know your friendships meeting people, enjoying the sport of rodeo, enjoying the, the, the Western lifestyle, uh, being part of this great experience. A Teamster is uh, it's, it's not an easy life because you, these animals want to eat and they need to be fed, they need to be taken care of, they need to be shooed. But we're, we're, we've got some people coming along. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, I have two Teamsters that uh, they're young, I mean, 30s, and, and the, they're gonna be the, the next generation. And I've got guys that come here and they're still, I mean, they're in their 80s, and they're still wanting to be teams, you know, still wanna do it, they still got teams, and they're handing it down now to their kids or their grandkids, whatever. So they're, they're we, it, it's, you say it might be a dying breed, it's just being limited, it's just being smaller, but there are people that just love, this is a passion. I mean, I, I get teary-eyed to see these people with these animals and how much they love them, how much they care for them. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, these are their kids. Right. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're big, they're big kids, right. but they love these animals and, and uh, I'm just proud to be part of it, proud to see all these uh, Teamsters come in here, be part of my parade. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful day. Uh, the, are you ready? Uh, the Westward, Westward Ho Parade is unique that, that there are no motorized vehicles that are allowed in the line of the march. All types of early transportation are featured from mules with a jerk line to oxen drawn covered wagons, Mormon carts, buggies, surreys, and much more. Plus riding groups and music furnished by numerous marching bands from surrounding communities. The Westward Hope Parade pays tribute to the early days in the Westward and the West and the pioneers who, whose descendants are participating in the Roundup. Here you will see most of the Native Americans who are camped at the Roundup grounds, dressed in their tribal finery from grandmother to the tiniest tot. And here comes the head of the parade, is the American flag carried by Mark Rosenberg, a past president of the Roundup and lifelong volunteer. Behind Mark is the riderless horse, a tribute to all military service members who have passed. In honor of our brave men and women serving their country, we have the flags of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. Scotty Payne from Elgin, Oregon has over 50 years of service driving a stagecoach or wagon in the Happy Canyon Show. Scotty was the winner of the last stagecoach race held at Pendleton Roundup. Even now, at the age of 63, Scotty still craves the thrill of having his team of horses pull a stagecoach at break breakneck speeds, as is evident in the Happy Canyon Show each night during the Roundup. James Ritzke is the lucky teamster in charge of pulling the Happy Canyon Can-Can Girls. The stage is pulling in the Whiskey Flat stage. The stage harkens back to the California Gold Rush days. 
Next up is the tribal flags representing the tribes participating in the Pendleton Roundup in Happy Canyon this year. Tribal participation in the Roundup goes back to 113 years. Have our mounted Native Americans. Native American beauty contestants compete in the beauty contest held on Thursday morning before the Roundup in Roy Rayleigh Park. Some dancers showing off their skills. Give them a hand, give them an applause. American flat wagon. These flat wagons carry tribal elders and children from various tribes. Wagon number 33 is being pulled by Brian Cook. From Irrigan, Oregon and his team of Percheron Mules. Wagon number 34 is being pulled by Mike and Roxana Nagel from Potlot, Idaho. Bring your love of rural life home with the 2024 Draft Horse Calendar. Each month features a different photo of draft horses at work. There's even a smaller photo featured on the grid pages. The calendar measures 12 by 19 inches and the wire binding ensures it lays flat on the wall. Large grid squares make it useful for keeping track of appointments or special occasions. They cost only $17.95 each with free shipping, or get two for $32. Just call 877-647-2452 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. That's 877-647-2452. Another Native American flat wagon, number 39, is being pulled by Wayne Beckwith. Tribal members help paint the black and purple wagons. Welcome Oregon's first couple, Governor Tina Kotek and First Lady Amy Kotek Williams, joining us from Salem, Oregon. They're riding with Teamster Tom Nagel and his team of Blonde Belgians.
This is our Pendleton Roundup Mounted Band. Welcome 2024 Miss Northwest Professional Rodeo Association, Avi Torgeson and the covered wagon is driven by Tim Bielenberg and crew with his two Belgium draft Mammoth Jack R Mules, Ann and Dan. Make sure you see our Happy Canyon show. The Noy Wagon is driven by Sandy Wesley and her geldings Zach and Spike. Here comes the Lewis and Roundup Stagecoach driven by Darren Nagel of the Foreign Belgians. Come see them next September at the 90th Lewis and Roundup. She's wild. Next up is Teamster Roger Cool driving the covered wagon. His horses are mother, daughter, perch, and cross team on board. It's okay. Are the professional miniature bull riders cover nine states across the u.s including idaho oregon utah nevada arizona alaska north and south dakota california washington and wyoming the future bull riding starts here join them october 5th 6th and 7th in the tramontan utah for the pmbr world finals Farmers Ending Hunger is an Oregon nonprofit that donates over 3 million pounds of quality food to the Oregon Food Bank. Teamster Mario Mingerelli is pulling the McClintock wagon. We now have four volumes of America's Rural Yesterday books with photos of farm life 100 years ago. Fieldwork has images of horses in the fields working the ground, planting, and harvesting the crop. Barn and Farmyard shows farmers putting that crop in the barn, silo, or corn crib and caring for poultry, hogs, cattle, and more. In At Home and in Town, farm families prepare Sunday dinner, relax in the parlor, drive to town by buggy or wagon, and visit the general store. Finally, Early Tractors has over 250 photos of early American tractors like Alice Chalmers, Oliver, John Deere, Farmall, Minneapolis Moline, and many more. These photos are of new tractors back in the day and show how they were configured coming out of the factory. Buy any of these books for $24.95 plus shipping. When you buy two or more, the price per book goes down, all the way to $17.49 per book when you buy all four. To order, just call Call 1-877-647-2452 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. That's 877-647-2452. Serving the City of Pendleton as Mayor since 2017, Mayor John Turner and Pendleton City Council members. Our Pendleton officials are riding today with Teamster Neil McColl and his team of mules. Two Clydesdales, Khalig and Mizee. Advocate, unite, and engage all facets of agriculture through the state and local chapters. Some projects include crop ID, signs, scholarships, Ag in the Classroom, Summer Ag Institute, and Ag Youth Mini Grants. Gus Donk and his crew are pulling the covered wagon with Ray and Roscoe, two Belgian drafts. The Yoakum Wagon is pulled by Tim Bailenberg and his crew, Granite and Bandit, two black perturans. Welcome to University of Oregon, U.S. UO is home to more than 22,000 students from Oregon, the U.S. and around the world. 
Joining the University of Oregon is Ed and Sue Kingzett. St. Paul Rodeo Court. The 2023 St. Paul Rodeo Court, Queen Mary, Princess Jenna, and Princess Jessica invite you to their 4th of July Rodeo, the St. Paul Rodeo in St. Paul, Oregon. The St. Paul Rodeo features top cowboys in the PRCA and fireworks every night. Linda Claypool and her crew is the Teamster pulling the Dalles Mud Wagon. Welcome Queen Hallie Hasselbacher of the Northwest Rodeo. She is 14 years old and calls Salem, Oregon her home. Princess Paisley, Paisley Ann Blair is 15 years old and hails from Talent, Oregon. Little Princess Lenny Scott is the first Northwest Youth Rodeo Association Little Princess. The longest standing Pendle Chamber of Commerce, the longest standing committee of Chamber of Commerce, the ambassadors are a group of business leaders committed to helping Pendleton Chamber of Commerce fulfill its core functions to create a stronger local economy, promote the community, and provide relationship building and business connections. The Helix Rodeo Board is riding today with Carrie Swearing. Swearingen and her horse Hemi, a 15-year-old Gypsy Vanner. We have WSU Coug fans proudly carrying the iconic WSU flag. Once a Coug, always a Coug. Let's hear it for WSU. Go Cougs! Brewery Wagon, Allison Gilham of Tigard, Oregon with Shire sisters Sophie and Claire. You're all right, go ahead. Thank you, sir. The sprinkler wagon made by Studebaker is, pulled, is being pulled today by Dar Darl Allred and spotted draft horses Cisco, Tess, Jake, and Crystal. Beverly Howe riding in honor of her late husband, Will Howe, who passed away earlier this year at 81. Legendary horseman, trainer, pioneer horsemanship, clinician, and reigned cow horse coach from Richland, Oregon. Brandon and Shelly Moore are pulling the freight wagon with their Belgian geldings. These wagons go back to the 1850s and crossed the Oregon Trail. Bulk Week Wagon. Next up is Sass Waldron pulling the Bulk Week Wagon. Her team are home raised by Bay Shower. Sass's husband, Dave, joins her pulling the log, logging arch with their black mules. The logging arch was made by Redding Ironworks in Redding, California, and is one of only a handful still functioning today. Don Lee is our teamster pulling the Calliope and his Percherons, Pete and Kate. Thank you for joining us today, and don't forget to let her back. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.